name is Kateba Saiz. Right now I'm on my way to travel straight to New York and I'm going to show you the Middle East. I hope you will enjoy what you're about to see. Saudi Arabia is the largest country on the Arabian Peninsula. It comprises about four-fifths of the Arabian Peninsula, a landmass constituting a distinct geographical entity. It is bordered on the north by Jordan, Iraq and Kuwait, and on the east by the Arabian Gulf, on the east by the Gulf, Bahrain, Qatar, and the United Arab Emirates, on the south Oman and Yemen, and from the west on the Red Sea. The kingdom lies in a strategical important position. The kingdom of Saudi Arabia is of crucial importance for several reasons. First and foremost, it was the birthplace of Prophet Muhammad and is the location of Islam's two holiest cities, Mecca and Medina. Secondly, Saudi Arabia is a major player on the political scene. All its policies are based on the search for justice and stability and it has used its good offices on many occasions at both regional and international level to resolve some of the world's most intractable problems. <laughs> Brief History of Mecca and the Kaaba The Kaaba is the great monument of Islam. It was built 4,000 years ago by Prophet Ibrahim and his son Ismail. Mecca is a city which was built around the Kaaba and grew up to become one of the oldest cities of the world and most sacred city in Islam. The Kaaba or House of God in Mecca and is considered the Qibla or the Direction. Muslims from all over the world face toward this Qibla for their prayers and worship God when Prophet Muhammad migrated to Medina, he built his mosque nearby his home. And later on, with the increase of the believers, the mosque was renovated several times during the past 1,425 years until Prophet Muhammad's resting place in his home became part of the mosque. The kingdom was founded by Abdul Aziz bin Saud, whose efforts began in 1902 when he captured the al Sa'd's ancestral home of Riyadh and culminated in 1932 with the proclamation and recognition of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Abdul Aziz's military and political successes were not mirrored economically until vast reserves of oil were discovered in March 1938 and 1946 and by 1949 Production was in full swing. Oil has provided Saudi Arabia with economic property and a great deal of leverage in the international community. Prior to his death in 1953, Abdul Aziz was aware of the difficulties facing other regional absolute rulers relent on extended family networks attempted to regulate the succession. Islam um, focuses on the idea that, that uh, there is a God who's watching you and on the idea that there are angels who are watching what you're doing. Uh, it's like having cameras, you know, when, when you're in a, in a company, for example, and uh, they have cameras to watch the employees, what they're doing. So when there's cameras, usually the employees don't do anything wrong because they feel that someone's watching them. So a Muslim supposedly uh, has this concept that he's being watched and that everything he does, whether good or bad, is recorded. Uh, also the five prayers. 
is this al always reminding you of this connection. Don't forget this connection. Uh, five times a day is, uh, is like every three, four hours. You reconnect again with this concept of, of God. A major value is justice. Uh, you're not allowed to kill someone, you're not allowed to steal uh, something from someone. It's basically very similar to the Ten Commandments. You treat your neighbors in the right, in the right manner. Uh, this is one aspect. And then the value of your relationship with God, where you have to acknowledge that He is one God and He created you and uh, you pray to Him and uh, uh, you have this spiritual relationship with Him. So it's somewhere in the middle. It's not a purely spiritual religion uh, where it only focuses on spirituality and doesn't talk about earthly matters. And it's also not a purely earthly uh, religion where it focuses only on this world and this life uh, ignoring the afterlife. It's, it's a balance between both. How do you think we can improve the image of Islam overseas? By Muslims being better Muslims. The best uh, influence is by implementing. You know, when you talk about the concept of Islam and then they ask you, okay, where is this implemented? Show us. And you don't have that example, you have a problem. That's why, for example, when God, we believe in the Prophet Muhammad and we believe in the Quran, which is the word of God. God did not send the word of God in a book and told the people, follow it. He sent a messenger. Why? For him to be the example, the living example of this Quran or of this word of God. Same thing today. You can't just have Islam as a concept. If you don't have Muslims who are examples of this peaceful, just Islam that you're talking about, the West will not see anything material. All they will see is theory. So the best way is for uh, Muslims, when they go uh, on vacation in summer in Europe and the U.S., uh, Muslims who are studying in the U.S., uh, to be just resemble the true character of the Prophet uh, Muhammad. Be kind, uh, be always smiling. Uh, you will not give the right uh, impression about Islam if you, as a Muslim, go study in the U.S. and then leave and don't pay your bills <laughs> or, or don't pay rent. You know, or um, always uh, treat people in a bad manner. Uh, by nature, this will give a negative impression on Islam. So, to sum it up, having um, real life examples who resemble the values and having books written to the West that show what the real Prophet Muhammad was, because I think this is one of the major misconceptions. Uh, is who Prophet Muhammad is and his character as a human being. Um, we don't have enough books uh, that talk to the West about Prophet Muhammad as a human being, as a husband, as a, as a son, as a manager, uh, as a friend. Uh, all the books focus on his life as a historical life. You know, when was he born? What battles did he fight in? So the reader comes up that he's this guy who just spent all his day, day and night uh, fighting. And uh, um, So focusing on Prophet Muhammad as a human being, writing books about it and penetrating the media. Why do you believe Islam is portrayed in a negative way to foreigners? For example, like terrorism. Because of the actions of Muslims. Yeah, and when, uh, when the Muslims do something in the name of Islam or in the name of Allah that's negative, naturally the Westerners, when they see a Muslim doing this, they blame Islam. That's why I always say we have to differentiate between Islam and Muslims. Islam is a religion. Muslims are the people who follow it. Sometimes they don't follow it. Sometimes they follow it in a wrong way. Um, if you go back to the history of Europe, of the West, during the Dark Ages, there was something called the Inquisitions, where they would kill people, the church would kill people to divert them from Protestants to Catholics and so forth. Now, someone who doesn't know Christianity would say Christianity is a bad thing, and Jesus is a bad person. But someone who studied uh, Christianity and knows Jesus, he would say that those people misused Christianity and misused the word of Jesus, uh, and misimplemented Christianity in the world. So we separate. We don't blame Christianity, but we blame the people in the Dark Ages who misused the church. Same today. When a Muslim does something in the name of God, um, 
uh, we have to separate. Is this really the word of God? Or is this a wrong interpretation from the Muslims?